What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an absolutely fantastic day. I know I am and if you are having a fantastic day be sure to press the like button otherwise no joke no scam. Your school bus will try to do that thing at the start of Sky High where it jumps over the highway. The only difference is your school bus won't be able to fly. So uh, press the like button to avoid that unfortunate accident. Real talk though guys like button or not your buses are gonna be okay alright but this story that I'm telling you guys today is about a time where I was on a school bus as a young whippersnapper and I uh, got myself involved in a pretty funny situation all right no one was ever harmed okay no children were ever in danger but basically I got roped into having to go to a middle school and get involved in like a dean's investigation of a bullying report as like an eight-year-old on a field trip and uh, the situation that <laughs> they were reporting on that I witnessed was just funny so uh yeah without further ado let's get into it three two one gang so I went to this middle school that had something that they they claimed it was super awesome, which was like this school outreach program, all right? And a kid from every grade would basically go on a field trip with sixth graders for a day, come back, and tell their class about what it was like to be with sixth graders and what the big kids were like and what a day in the life of a big kid was. It was one of those things that all the teachers were like, it's just so incredible to watch these students mature. But in reality, nobody really cared. The only reason anyone wanted to go was because it was way better to be on a field trip all day with sixth graders than it was to be sitting in elementary elementary school, you know? Even elementary schoolers are aware of the concept of how crappy it is to sit in a classroom for six hours doing nothing. So by the grace of He-Man and the Gray Skull, you know, I somehow get chosen to represent the third grade class on this field trip. And I was a weird kid. I think I've made that pretty clear, all right? I had an emo phase. I was definitely a bizarre elementary schooler, and I was really small. I don't know what it is, dude. Like, I I'm 6'3 now, but for whatever reason, up until, you know, I was 16, I was under 5'4". I was just always a really small kids. So I was in third grade, but I probably looked more like a first grader than I'd like to admit. All right, it's not my proudest moment, but uh, hashtag glow up, you know what I mean. Every kid watching this who's like, you know, short is like, oh my god, there's hope. I, I can grow too. Yeah, that's right. You'll all grow. You'll all be 6'3 like me. We'll take over the planet. 6'3 gang for life. Anyways, the day comes and I go to a middle school. Pretty nervous because, you know, I've never been to a middle school before. I was a little shaken up. I was like, yo, what if middle schoolers, you know, eat kids? I don't know what middle schooler diets are on. I I've never been around them before, so... I get there and we are gonna be paired up with like a chaperone from the 8th grade. So these kids are 13, 14 years old. You know, they're a little bit older, almost high school freshmen. So like, like I said, 13, 14 years old, you know, it's not like a 12 year old leading an 8 year old. It's like, they're 14, you know, some of them were 15 if they were kind of dumb on the dumber side, but uh, you know, we weren't supposed to say that out loud. Regardless, we get a chaperone and I don't even know how the person that ended up chaperoning me got the position because I can tell you one thing very clearly. He did not want to be there, all right? From the very second that I was paired with the guy, he was constantly like, oh, there's so much things I would rather be doing than like watching uh, some, some kid on a field trip. And I'm like, yo, bro, listen, I'm really sorry. Even third grade me is like, you know, sorry under my breath because I felt bad that this kid was going to have to deal with me, all right? I didn't want to ruin his day. And he's acting, I'm just like really harsh and his mellow. Which in retrospect, bro, come on, I I'm a kid. Just be chill. Let me let me chill your vibe for a second, all right? Like it it's gonna be okay. You just gotta hang out with me for the day. Just be nice to the little. Kid. But at the same time, I've uh, also met eighth graders, and I understand that they hate everything. So I can understand why the kid was being a little bit of a jerk. But whatever. So the kid's being a little bit of a jerk, and he's like, "We're gonna sit on the back of the bus," which I mean, I thought was cool because every cartoon when you're growing up tells you that the back of the bus is the cool spot. You know, it's the place to be. It is the number one location where you have to be located if you want to have any amount of social clout. So I'm like, we're gonna sit on the back of the bus? Alright, geez, sign me up. Apparently my chaperone, as much as he hated me, is a pretty dope kid. Back of the bus privileges. I'm gonna whip out my hall pass and be like, oh, this bad boy? Nah, nah, I sit on the back of the bus. You gotta let me go. So whatever, we get back there and I sit next to like my chaperone dude, you know, the 8th grader and he's like, so kid, like, what are you into? So I start telling him that I like video games because I've always liked video games. And he's like, yo, I'm a gamer too. So we start talking about Call of Duty because my parents were irresponsible and I was definitely playing more Modern Warfare 2 than I should have been when I was that young. So, whatever, I'm talking to him about my favorite loadout, like the Scar H with the silencer, you know, and we're talking back and forth. And then this kid gets on and, like, makes eye contact with my chaperone dude. And I'm gonna give him a nickname. I'm gonna say that my chaperone 
clown's name was Tony. And he says, oh, hey, Tony. And I can tell from the way Tony says his name. I'm going to name this dude Frank. We're going to have, like, a mobster situation. What's funny is their names were not anywhere near Frank or Tony. They were, like, 20 times more, you know, West Coast white dude than that. But Frank and Tony sound scarier. So I'm going to call him Frank and Tony in this video. So Tony and Frank are kind of, like, looking at each other angrily. And I might be young, but I'm not that dumb. I can tell that these dudes got some beef, all right? I don't know what it is. I don't know if Wendy's is looking for it. Where's the beef, you know? But uh, somebody is beefing with something. There is something in the air of these guys not liking each other. So Frank sits down next to Tony, but like across the aisle. I hope that makes sense. I'm sure 99% of you know exactly what I'm talking about, so I'm going to keep going. So he sits across the aisle from Tony, and they're just kind of staring at each other awkwardly. And Frank has a kid with him that I don't know, but, uh, you know, he seems pretty cool enough. Like, it's just, you know, me and uh, Tony and Frank and his little kid which he carries with him everywhere. <laughs> it's like a chihuahua, but it's a child. It's a chalala, ch child chihuahua. So we're sitting there, and, you know, the bus slowly fills up, and more people start coming to the back, and it looks like people are pretty much divided on either, like, Tony or Frank's side, you know? They're, they're pretty split. And out of nowhere, Frank looks at Tony, and he's like, you know, you're even uglier than you used to be, okay? And, and, and that means war. They're gonna roast battle. I don't know why Frank and Tony refused to just, like, actually fight, but for whatever reason, you know, roast battles were their preferred form of combat on this bus, apparently. So, you know, they're, like, all arguing with each other, and uh, Frank had roasted Tony first. And then, out of nowhere, Tony just starts bringing the heavy hammers, all right? I've heard roast battles, and you look uglier than you used to. It's not a a bad opener, Frank, all right, but it's pretty weak in the roasting game if I do get to have an opinion about that myself as a professional talkerer. Uh, I just feel like you're uglier than you used to be implies that you used to think he was somewhat attractive or also why would I care if a dude thinks I'm attractive? Like, ah, this dude that I don't want to date anyways because I'm I'm not gay means, wait, like, what, what does that mean to me, you know? A dude that I wasn't gonna date anyways thinks I'm ugly? Alright, I can live with that. Like, if a girl calls you ugly, that one stings a little bit, okay? That one hurts just a smidge, especially if you thought the girl was cute, you know? Like, that that one would sting. Or, like, you know, if, if I was sitting with James Charles, that would have offended him. He'd be like, damn, that one hurts. But it doesn't work. It doesn't work most of the time. Tony snaps back and he goes, you know, Frank, I'm surprised they let you chaperone one of the kids considering it looks like you can't go within a thousand feet of an elementary school. And that's a good roast. That's some heat, alright? I'm not saying that you should roast people, okay? I'm not advocating for that in the slightest. Don't do it. It is bad. It is it is rude to insult others, everyone. But as far as insults go, you know, if you're gonna do it, bring the heat. Telling Frank that he looks like he can't go within a thousand feet of an elementary school is a pretty solid roast. That puts him on a list of people including Jared Fogle and other bad people. So at this point, the bus starts to get involved, you know? Everybody's kind of, ooh, oh, and like, you know, that one was more heat than you used to be more attractive. Like, that's just a bad insult. So, the back of the the bus kind of goes like, oh, and everybody's impressed, you know, and Frank starts to get red. He looks embarrassed because he knows he's getting out roasted. So he goes for a trump card. All right. He's like, dang, I'm losing. I'm looking lame. I'm looking like I'm definitely not the swaggiest kid in the back of the bus. And if I'm not the swaggiest kid in the back of the bus, that's a big no Rooney, you know? So he decides to aim back and hit something that, uh, you know, it, it is probably a little bit too far. All right. But, uh, he got a little heated, decided to try to win the roast battle. I don't necessarily think it was the right move, but he decides to aim for something about Tony that, uh, you know, you, you just shouldn't roast. So I guess Tony, uh, lives with his grandmother. I didn't know this at the time. I only ended up learning this due to Frank's roast, but, uh, I guess Tony lived with his grandmother. And like I said, Tony was a pretty popular kid and his grandmother would walk him to school every morning. And I guess his grandmother, like, you know, knew some of his friends. And, uh, it just so happens that, Tony's grandmother is in a wheelchair, you know? No, not not through any fault of her own. Like, it wasn't like she was sitting there one day like, mm, you know what would be great if I just sat in a wheelchair from now on? But she was in a wheelchair for whatever reason, and uh, people knew this at the school because she would, well, I guess she wouldn't walk him to school. She would roll him to school. But you guys get the idea, all right? Very sweet grandma doing very sweet grandma things. She would roll her grandson to school every morning like a chubby kid down a hill. So Frank, sensing that he was on the verge of a defeat, decides to uh, say something along the lines of, yeah, I might be, you know, weird looking, but at least my grandma can walk, which 
is honestly probably the most horrible thing you can say. I'm not laughing because, like, it's funny, all right? It's, it's just, you know when someone says something that's, like, so horrible that it's, you know, it's funny? Like, you just can't help but laugh. Like, picture this. Okay, I'm a third grader witnessing my first day in middle school, all right? I'm like, oh, okay, what is middle school actually going to be like? I have to go report to the kids in my class what this is like. You know, I was taking notes on, like, what the bus was like so I could write this essay about what middle school was like for my classmates, you know? And I'm sitting here, and I just hear one eighth grader say to another, I might be ugly and look weird, but at least my grandma can walk, which just really ups the ante, all right? So, Tony, at that point, I do not know how he manages to restrain himself, but he proceeds to unleash some insults on Frank, all right? And uh, they were pretty bad, okay? They were pretty mean. Uh, Frank was a chubby guy, you know, and he said something along the lines of, you have something on your chin, and Frank looked down and he goes, oh, no, not that one, the fourth one. Like, you know, he, he was kind of going in on the guy pretty hard, and Frank starts to get upset, and Frank starts to cry. And usually, when the person you're flaming starts to cry, that's when you love up. You shouldn't flame anyone till they cry ever. I'm not saying you should do this. Like, if, if YouTube is watching this, I'm not advocating for bullying. You should not do this. This is a story of what not to do. But Frank starts crying, you know, but I mean, hey, you, you made fun of his grandma for being in a wheelchair, bro. Did you expect him to take it easy on you? Like, come on, let's be realistic here. So Frank starts crying, but Tony keeps roasting. He just doesn't let up, which, uh, you know, in some cases is not good, but in other cases is entertaining, and don't do it. Don't do it, kids. This is, I'm not advocating for that. Anyways, so whatever. He starts crying, and finally Tony relaxes and sits down, and he looks over at me in my third grade face with, like, my jaw dropped, like, oh my god, what just happened? And he's like, okay, can you not tell my teachers about this? Because at the end of the day, for him, too, I was going to have to go to the people that organized this with the middle school and be like, yeah. Uh, Tony was the coolest. He did nothing wrong. But, like, you know, I just witnessed him absolutely eviscerate a kid so disgustingly well verbally on a bus that he started crying. You know how much it takes to get somebody to cry from, like, just your words? That is an evil skill, dude. Like, this guy was made to be a lawyer and not a good lawyer, all right? Tony was made to be one of those lawyers that, like, gets the oil companies off with, you know, just getting away with drilling. Like, he, he's that good with his words somehow and not in, like, the best way ever. So I keep my mouth shut. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to say anything because A, I'm not a snitch, and B, I just witness what this kid could do if he's angry, and I would rather not have him be angry with me, all right? Uh, I'm a fragile little kid, man. I'm a third grader. I don't know what's up. So I keep my mouth shut, and uh, <laughs> uh, we go about our day. The field trip is quite enjoyable. You know, me and Tony just kind of vibe out, walking around this museum, looking at dinosaurs and stuff. It, it was pretty cool. We talked more about video games. We were just vibing out. Like, he, he was a pretty cool dude. I didn't have any beef with him other than the fact that, you know, there was a, a crying kid back there, but I don't feel bad for Frank either. Like, it's just one of those situations where everybody involved is kind of like, oh, you're scary now because you just made a, a, a kid cry, and you are scary because you made fun of his grandma for being in a wheelchair. Like, everybody takes an L here, okay? Plus, Tony was really nice, and uh, I probably would have done the same thing. As much as I would like to pretend that I'm a better person than Tony, I'm not. And if somebody went after my grandma for being in a wheelchair, uh, I probably would try my best to make them cry too, to be completely honest. So... Yeah, 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 Tony, you did the right thing, bro. I'm not gonna lie. I'll, <laughs> I, I was trying to be like, oh, yeah, it's so bad to insult people. But if they make fun of your grandma in a wheelchair, you know, all bets are off. So whatever, I get back to class, uh, not my class, but like the middle school, and we're about to separate ways, and the dean walks up to me and he says, hi, were you with Tony today? And I go, yes. And he goes, will you come with me, please? And I say, uh, sure, sure. So I walk... <laughs> with the dean of the office, you know, and I don't really know what's going on. Maybe they just want to be like, ah, oh, how was Tony? I already did a report. I said he was great. I said he was nice. We get into the office and he says, was there a bullying incident today on the bus when you and Tony were on your way to the museum? And I'm like, nope, I don't know what you're talking about. And he says, well, you know, the reason that I'm asking is you sat next to Tony and Tony and Frank are in the other room because they got into a fight when they got back to school. Like, it, listen, you got away with the roast, bro, but you can't fight them. And I guess it came out that they were both, you know, uh, on the bus arguing, but that Tony was bullying Frank way more than the other way around. And I'm like, OK, listen, 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 hear me out. Third grade me, you know, little me just, well, they were both being mean, you know? I said they were both being mean. He's like, oh, what do you mean? So I recount the story. Little th 
third grade me having to be like, and that's why my grandma can walk to this grown man, this like Dean that obviously, you know, deals with much more serious stuff on a daily basis. But here I am just recounting the best roast battle I've ever seen to some Dean as a third grader. My middle school career started off with a bang for sure. So the principal is hearing me say all this and his eyes are all wide or like the Dean, the principal, same thing. What is the difference between a Dean and a principal? I don't get it. So whatever. He's like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to call your parents, you know, like, I can't believe this. I'm so sorry for the poor example set by our students. He's freaking out because now he realizes that he has a third grader that witnessed, you know, some straight up stuff that I guess I wasn't supposed to see. I didn't really care, dude. Like I said, I was playing Call of Duty online at the time on Xbox, so I didn't care. These words were bouncing off of me like it was nothing. Do you understand what early Call of Duty lobbies sounded like in like, you know, the, the mid to early 2010s? It was insanity. People would just be calling each other every word under the sun. It was a race to see who could say more swear words in a second. So somebody calling somebody fat doesn't bug me that much. So whatever, I'm kind of explaining the situation. I guess it wasn't the first time that Frank was in trouble for saying horrible things to people because, you know, uh, I, as I was sitting outside of the dean's office and he bought Frank and Tony back in, he starts telling Frank, you know, this is the third time that you've had an incident like this. You know, you have to be nicer to your other students, like the people around you are a community. Us at this school, we really care. Yada, yada, yada. All the crap teachers are supposed to say, like, oh, I, I am not a family with everyone that went to my school, okay? It's just, that's not how it works. But, uh, yeah, Frank actually ended up getting recommended to be moved to a different school, one of the behavioral schools, so, uh, basically he got expelled for it. And as for Tony, you know, he did end up getting a three-day suspension, but all is well that ends well. If you make fun of someone's grandma for being in a wheelchair, that just might happen. Karma will, uh, find a way to expel you from the school because, you know, you, you probably deserve it. But on that note, guys, that's gonna do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to press the like button. Let me know in the comments section down below what you thought of the video. And as always, be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications. If you turn on notifications, you send a screenshot to my Instagram, which is at Scrubby. I shout somebody out every day. Today's notification shout out goes to AceFresh underscore YT. Big thank you for having on notifications. I do really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I tell videos and stories like this every single day. I, I don't tell videos. I tell stories like this every single day. So if you enjoyed it and you want more of it, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you are subbed and you really want to support the channel, check Check out the merch. The Teespring link is down below. I'm going to be getting new merch pretty soon. New designs are going to be coming out at the end of this month, so uh, be on the lookout for that. It's the last time to cop the no joke, no scam hoodies. So uh, yeah, get it if you want. Don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot. I've got to go make sure that my little brother is prepared to just absolutely destroy everyone on the bus tomorrow. So that way, my legacy lives up to the name, and I am known among the middle schoolers as Conqueror the Destroyer, Roaster of the School Bus. Have a good day, and I'll see you guys next time. I'm out. Peace.